Hi guys, thank you so much for joining us for this video. Tanya, the VP of Marketing, I'm here with Jim Wright, who is an operator here at Stanley Beer Hall in beautiful Aurora, Colorado. Hi Jim. Hello Tanya, welcome, good morning. Good morning, or good afternoon if you're good watching afternoon. it later. Yeah. But great to have you, and we're about to show you how to batch margarita. Jim is very experienced with this and other cocktails as well. I'm not, I have only done it a few times, and I'm gonna ask a very dumb question to make it easy in case that you are doing this for the very first time and are gonna be following this video. So Jim, where do we start? Well, we start with um, coming up with a recipe that fits the batch that we're gonna make. Uh, we're using corny kegs, which are five gallon kegs, which most of you know already. Um, it's important to come up with a recipe that works on whole bottles, so your staff doesn't have to measure anything more than is necessary. Make it easy, kind of idiot proof when you're in a rush or very busy so we make it fast so for ours it's a little bigger than a corny keg so we're actually going to mix it into a cambro first and i always like to start with tequila is it because you just want some extra for later <laughs> well you always take the extra cambro home so yeah okay great and you never never know who's in the back dipping so out of it so I get to see you just yeah there's always <laughs> a couple inches left and Somehow there's always less than that when I go back to fill it in. So okay. anyway. Or maybe your team calls this quality assurance testing. You know, just, you just kind of have to make sure that things are good. So, uh, yeah. We call it team building, but same thing. So. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, go for it. So I always put the tequila in first. It doesn't really matter because you're going to mix it up. Uh, but my we make normally make this in the back of the house, and the team likes the smell of the tequila wafting through the kitchen. So I always start with that because yeah. it goes. So one for awesome. you. One for me. One for me. All right, I'm going. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, I always try, you can just pour it or you can get it swirling. Yeah. If you, if you swirl if it, you does swirl, it go a little bit faster? It does because it doesn't get a vacuum. So. Okay. So, press it number one. If you swirl it, it goes a little bit faster. And I'm not very good at swirling. And Tim was totally right about the smell, by the way. <laughs> they yep. smell pretty good. And keep in mind, what is it? 1 p.m. over here? It's still pretty early in the day. <laughs> yes. Never too early but for tequila. But you know, being from Czech Republic, I always say it's five o'clock somewhere or later in the day. So, okay, we're so done with this one. You're a better bet yeah. than I was because mine didn't swirl. Yeah. Okay, we'll get these out. We've got one more. So, one more. Okay, there's I lots. Can, I get this one going while you can talk about the next ingredient. Okay, so um, the next ingredient is actually uh, triple sec. Again, measured to one bottle size. These are 1.75s. So, you can. These are 1.75 as well? Yes. So, um, in these big batches, it's easier. You don't have as much waste in the bottles, and it's cheaper by the ounce. So, these come in plastic bottles. So I'm going to beat you this time, I think. Oh no! <laughs> I'm close. <laughs> They're small. All right. All right. Got this one. So the um, the next in next ingredients are lime juice. We use Rose's lime here because we go through a lot of margaritas and. Squeezing that amount of lime juice um, is difficult, and it's important with the pour my beer system for the flow meters that you have clarified cocktails. You can't have juice bits, uh, yeah. fresh squeezed juices, and stuff like that. You'd have to strain them through cheesecloth or something to make sure they work in the system. So that's an important piece. You don't want that's, to clog those flow meters. Yeah, that's also part of the reason that we do uh, roses here. But a lot of it's really just because of the volume we do. We're very lucky uh, on how many. See, I told it you it smells, smells good. good. Yeah. So. I do these two at a time because okay, it doesn't take as long. Okay. So. Can I start? Or go ahead and start. I don't know. If you're going to cheat, you can start ahead of me. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm first. <laughs> okay. We should have got a trash can, I guess. Okay. Starting to smell closer to what I'm used to when I smell my Yeah. Beer. Well, it's almost the right color. Roses does add a little bit of an interesting color to the margarita, but it comes out it comes out great when we're done with this recipe. Quick so. question, since you mentioned you cannot really do juice in the house because it wouldn't be obviously practical, it wouldn't be efficient. How many margarita kegs on average do you go a week? So um, for us here, because we're lucky to be a high volume place or pretty high volume place, um, we go through five to eight kegs of margaritas a week. Most of those are Thursday through Friday, and there's some days we'll go through three or four kegs a day. Oh, yeah. We're actually getting ready to order. They make they do make 15 and a half gallon uh, half barrel size uh, kegs now that you can make your own uh, margaritas in, mm -hmm. and we're ordering some so that we can make one big giant keg and not have to change them uh, quite as often. And they also have attachments now where you can carbonate your own drinks inside those kegs. Great. So cool. I'm looking forward to playing with those. I'll be here for so. Yes, yeah, so um, so now um, 
We have a few, there's a couple secret ingredients. This is one of them. It's a juice, I'll just leave it at that. This is in-house recipe, one gallon of that. If you message me, I might reveal the secret. Ah. <laughs> we'll see, I'll see if Jim I knew that there's no secrets but around can, here. So. This, juice, right? this is orange juice, yeah. obvious. Tying things together. In my world, coming as an old, bar, old uh, Denver bartender, Grand Marnier is mandatory in all margaritas for me. So there's a little taste of that in there because we can't do the floaters as people pour everything. Um, and then there's also, just because of the richness of the juice. <laughs> it does smell amazing You right won't now. want to drink straight out of the yeah, bucket, yeah, come yeah, on. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, just a little bit of water because that, uh, that balances out some of the um, Is it because other there's ingredients. no icing there right now and you just want to... It had to do with the, it just had to do with what OJ, what apple juice. Gotcha. We use, see? Oh! Oh, you got it out of me. Thank you, cheap. I think you got it out. Let's see who is like a careful, detailed relationship. Right. Now he makes... I can beep it. I can beep it. Ah, sorry, that's okay. <laughs> All um, right, you just heard the secret okay. in the there. I swear, it's so, really good. So, um, so that's it for this marg. Now we just have to get it into the keg. Okay. Um, if you spill some on me, it's okay. I will just, I'll sacrifice. All right. I don't okay. know that we want that on the video. Okay. No, no, it's okay. okay. So this Let's takes a little, a little, uh, here. little practice. A big funnel helps, but I found it to be easier just to pour it on the floor. And team building. All right, <laughs> let's do it. All right. Um, so here, so now with these, uh, with these kegs, do you want me to move this? Yep, great. Yep. So with these kegs, um, these are Sankey, Sankey heads that we use. They are, there are other kegs you can use. Um, just uh, put the top in, seal it, and then we always take, we do two things. One, label it, put the date on it. The health department loves that. Um, and then I'll take it in the back and I'll connect it to the system right away, even though I might not be um, connecting this keg uh, immediately to pressurize the keg that makes uh, all the juices and everything um, last, a, last a lot longer just in case you do have a slow day. We go through these within a day so it's not an issue with us. They do make mixing kegs that will keep the juice and stuff like that mixing and, and such but that's pretty much it. Now it's just a matter of tapping and having a margarita. Okay well uh, you can't drink margaritas unless you tap margaritas. Um, so we're going to show you how to change a keg. It's pretty simple. Um, these Sankey heads are very easy to use. Uh, keep in mind that when you open up these pressurized kegs, these Sankey heads tend to have a little bit of a spurt on them. So step out of the way. Um, they slide right off and then you take the old keg, move it out of the way. Notice 319 on the margarita, move it to the newer one that we just made. And this head just slides on. Just like that, and you simply lift up on the tab, push down on it, and clicks. That's all there is to it. Sometimes when the seal is sealing, you'll hear a little spurt like that, uh, but that's pretty normal. It's just the, the keg sealing. One thing to keep in mind when you uh, take out your old keg before you try to take the top off of it, just take this uh, little ring here and release the pressure off the keg and then the top will come off. All right, Jim, so we did the batching. He also showed me how to tap it over there in the cooler. So now we are ready to hopefully have some of that margarita, the fun part, right? Yeah, that's the whole reason for the pour my beer system. Awesome. Make some drinks, pour your own drinks. It's awesome. And what are some of the things that you want to keep in mind as an operator when you're serving cocktails? Uh, well, for mar margaritas specifically, we always like to have uh, salted glasses uh, pre-done for our guests, so we do. Um, we keep that uh, stocked at our glass racks, both always nearby the self-tap wall. Um, the other thing is to have something uh, like a soda machine to be able to dispense ice so the guests can get their own ice quickly. That'll save you a lot of uh, running back to the back to grab ice for your guests when they ask for it. We learned the hard way on that one. So now we have it right next door. Um, you outside learned that, of that lesson inside on your 37 tabs there, right? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Just so you know, we're standing in the outside patio which where they have 14 tabs and they first started with the 37 tabs inside and the cocktail machine, sorry, cocktail machine, the um, ice machine is a little bit farther. So that's why her it's so close. Yep. Yeah. And margaritas are <clears throat> great for outdoor patio. So we decided to have it in both places and it's great for it. us. Yeah. You, you can never be too far from your margarita tap if you come to Stanley Beer Hall. <laughs> that should be a slogan for you guys. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's, so, let's get to some pouring. Okay. 
All right, so let's place the card in. And, and let's just do a pull, half, 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 half. <laughs> I am. I need to drive later today, All so right, I think so half is good enough. <laughs> I'll do a half as well. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, make me look bad. So. I'm more of a beer drinker. All Alrighty, right. um, thank you so much, Jim, for taking the time to explain everybody over here. If you enjoy this video, make sure to check out other videos because we have other cocktail classes, batching, and on our YouTube channel. And thanks for tuning in. And thanks again, Jim. Cheers and have My a great pleasure. day. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Just as good as inside. Yeah, it does. Even better. It's outside. <laughs>